Hi guys, welcome to the new section, Data Representation Using Auto Encoders. This section will introduce unsupervised applications of deep learning using auto encoders. We will first set up auto encoders and build stochastic encoders and decoders. We will then evaluate sparse decomposition and learn manifolds from auto encoders. Lastly, we will set up denoising and stacked auto encoders. Let's move on to the first video, setting up auto encoders. In this video, we'll take a look at data normalization running optimization. There exists a lot of different architectures of autoencoders distinguished by cost functions used to capture data representation. The most basic autoencoder is known as a vanilla autoencoder. It's a two-layer neural network with one hidden layer the same number of nodes at the input and output layers with an objective to minimize the cost function. The current approach can be easily extended to multiple layers, also known as multi-layer autoencoder. The number of nodes plays a very critical role in autoencoders. If the number of nodes in the hidden layer is less than the input layer, then an autoencoder is known as an undercomplete autoencoder. A higher number of nodes in the hidden layer represents the overcomplete autoencoder or sparse autoencoder. The sparse autoencoder aims to impose sparsity in the hidden layer. The sparsity can be achieved by introducing a higher number of nodes than the input in the hidden layer or by introducing a penalty in the loss function that will move the weights from the hidden layer toward zero. Some autoencoders attain the sparsity by manually zeroing out the weight for nodes. These are referred to as k-sparse autoencoders. First, set up the R TensorFlow environment. The load occupancy data function can be used to load the data by setting the correct working directory path. Here's how the load occupancy data looks like. Let's learn a bit about data normalization. Data normalization is a critical step in machine learning to bring data to a similar scale. It is also known as feature scaling and is performed as data preprocessing. There are multiple ways to perform normalization, min-max standardization. The min-max retains the original distribution and scales the feature values between 0, 1 with 0 as the minimum value of the feature, and 1 as the maximum value. Here, x dash is the normalized value of the feature. The method is sensitive to outliers in the data set. Decimal scaling. This form of scaling is used where values of different decimal ranges are present. For example, two features with different bounds can be brought to a similar scale using decimal scaling in this manner. Z-score. This transformation scales the value toward a normal distribution with a zero mean and unit variance. Here, mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation of the feature. These distributions are very efficient for a dataset with a Gaussian distribution. This is the operation for data normalization. Now, load packages and TensorFlow for Python 3. The train and test occupancy dataset can be loaded to the R environment with this script, and here we create data frames for training and test data. Take a look at the distribution of features for the occupancy data. This figure shows min-max normalization, bringing the values within bounds 0, 1, and it does not change the distribution and correlations between features. The next step is to learn how to set up an autoencoder model. Let's set up a vanilla autoencoder using TensorFlow. Reset the graph and start interactive session. Now, define the input parameter using this code. When n hidden 1 is low, the autoencoder is compressing the data and is referred to as an undercomplete autoencoder, whereas where an n hidden 1 is large, then the autoencoder is sparse and is referred to as an overcomplete autoencoder. Define graph input parameters that include the input tensor and layer definitions for the encoder and decoder. There is a function to evaluate the response as well. Here it is. The autoencoder function takes the node bias weights and computes the output. The same function can be used for encoder and decoder by passing respective weights. Next, create encoder and decoder objects by passing symbolic TensorFlow variables. The ypred is the outcome from decoder, which takes the encoder object as input with nodes and bias weights. 
The script defines mean square error as the cost function and uses RMS prop optimizer from TensorFlow with learning rate 0.01 for the optimization of weights. And this is the test setup. Now we would run optimizer optimization. Executing this process in TensorFlow consists of two steps. The first step is parameter initialization of the variables defined in the graph. The initialization is performed by calling the global variables initializer function from TensorFlow. Optimization is performed based on optimizing and monitoring the train and test performance. The cost function from train and test can be observed to understand convergence of the model as shown here. This graph shows that the model major convergence is at around 400 iterations. However, it is still converging in a very slow rate even after 1,000 iterations. The model is stable in both the train and holdout test datasets. That's all about autoencoders.